Welcome back to Arise Entertainment 360. I'm Shannon Lanier, and the rich and famous are often, you know, they are the perfect target for lawsuits. They're always in a lawsuit, and whether the suit is valid or not, when the stars go to court, the world is watching. Well, L Londell McMillan is an attorney for several celebrities, and he's here to run down a few headline-grabbing cases with us. Londell, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Too. Now, Londell, before we start, I want to make it clear, you don't represent any of the cases we are about to talk about today. But I would like for you to tell us who are some of the stars or celebrities that you do represent. Well, over the years, I've had a chance to represent many uh, high-profile clients in many cases from Michael Jackson, Prince, Spike Lee, uh, Kanye West, Little Kim, Aretha Franklin, and many, many more over the years. All right. Wow, well, that's an impressive list. All right, I know. That's very impressive. So let's just get started with the first case. Neo, he's being sued by his ex-girlfriend for defamation of character because he wasn't supposed to talk about any of their relationship stuff after they filed in court because she blamed him for being the father of the son. It turned out he wasn't the father of the son, but then he went on VH1 and talked about that relationship. So it's another paternity suit in a mm -hmm. way. We're t see. talking about a paternity suit. Correct. But he wasn't supposed to talk about it. Right. Well, defamation is a tort, uh, tort crime. It comes either slander mm -hmm. or libel, you know, and when you say something, it's slanderous. And if there was a violation of an order or agreement, it can also be a breach of contract. But often people file defamation actions not only to, to recover a judgment in court, but also to send a signal to the world that, listen, something was said falsely, it's not correct, and often people file lawsuits for PR purposes just as much mm. as they do for to, to find a judicial uh, resolution of the case. Now, how do these uh, these defamation suits differ for public figures versus private figures? Well, there's a higher standard that you have to meet if you're suing a, a a private person, but a public person is a lesser standard. The theory is that if you're going to be a public person, you put yourself out okay. into the public way for more scrutiny. Um, the counterbalance to defamation is the right of privacy, and the first, the first amendment is the counterbalance. So, um, the United States Constitution gives people a right to speak on uh, people in general, but there are mm -hmm. certain tests. If you're a public person, um, it's different than if you're a private person. So if you are a private person, how difficult is it to take someone who is a celebrity like Neo to court? If you're a private person, you can take people to court. It's easier because they said something against you as a private person. But as a public person, it's more difficult because then the test is harder. And is you that have to why... show actual malice. And you is have that to why show... celebrities tend to not sue as often as they could? Often, right. Mm -hmm. That's why celebrities don't do it versus a, a private individual. And also, you have to show damages. At the end of the day, right, you, what good is rendering a victory in a case and you can't show damages? In order to recover, you have to show that you've been harmed. It's not just whether or not the statement that was made was a false statement. It has to be a false statement to the detriment of another and damages that resulted. Mm. Okay, let's go on to the next suit. All right, who's DMX? next? DMX. Now, DMX is being sued because he was supposed to show up at a club for a meet and greet. They gave him $3,000 and he didn't show up. So now they're like... Shocking. Either, right, right. Give us our money back. Wait, first of all, who would want to see DMX? <laughs> Second of all, I like why to see did DMX. he show up? Okay, you like to see him. I guess enough people Apparently would pay him $3,000. Apparently club would like to see right. him, too. Well, 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 disclaimer on DMX. He okay. was one of my former clients as well, as well oh, okay. as the Rough Riders in Swiss. But I tell you, DMX is... He, he was a wonderful talent, and people want to see him even still. And my question is, why would you sue someone for $3,000? Right. Mm. The, cost, the cost alone, you know, would be probably beyond that. But that, that appears to be a breach of contract case, right? Mm -hmm. So whether it's verbal or whether it's in writing, whenever two parties come to an agreement, they have a meeting of the minds, they reach an agreement, the other party is supposed to perform their end of the bargain. When one fails to perform their end of the bargain, they breach the agreement. If it's a material breach of contract, someone can file a lawsuit for it. The question becomes, what's the cost efficiencies to file that kind of a lawsuit? Because mm. it would probably cost significantly more than $3,000 to file the lawsuit, retain a lawyer, think. et cetera, et cetera. You would think. You kind of just take the wash and walk away. You would think. You would think. <laughs> you would think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let, let's talk about Kim K, Kim Kardashian, uh -oh. and Chris Humphrey's divorce. Yes. Why is it taking so long? They were only married for 72 days. <laughs> Well, you know, when you're, filing a, when you're filing a lawsuit and you're going through discovery and processes, the parties have to be present. And apparently, you know, he's, he's got a pre-existing commitment. He plays for the Brooklyn Nets. And uh, his, his lawyers are filing objections to all these discoveries that are happening. Uh, I think that one party is seeking an annulment, one is seeking a divorce. Uh, there's a, it seems to be much more personal than, than not. 
in it that case. It seems a bit more spiteful, really. Mm. What do you think, Londell? I mean, he, she's pregnant with another man's baby. She's mm. clearly over this relationship. She's moved on. Why can't he just move on? Well, you know, he is playing basketball, so I guess he wants to be there. He wants oh. to see, he wants to depose her. He wants to look in her eyes and her face when the answers are apparently, this is what is alleged. So you gotta, you gotta just go with the flow. But this is also stopping her from getting married to Kanye or anyone else at this point, right? <laughs> Did you she's see a ring yet? I didn't see a ring. Did you see no, a ring? No, but she's stuck. She can't, though. She can't even think about that publicly because she's in this marriage, I right? Think she, I think she has a great argument to argue that it should be expedited and speed it up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to Michael Jordan. We talked about him earlier. Yes. Again, another paternity case. What yes. Does he stand a chance in this? She keeps filing and keeps appealing over and over. Well, it looks like she withdrew this time around, so perhaps settlement is underway. Way. Mm -hmm. But paternity cases and child custody cases are very common. So, you know, I advise my clients rather than get into these cases, just be careful on the front end. That's very, <laughs> That's very good advice. Now, had she gone ahead with this suit and it was discovered that he was indeed the father, would he have had to pay back child support? Or usually that's the case. Usually, you wow. know, states and federal law have really, really cracked down on child custody laws. They're even arresting people th these days. And so it's very much the case. So okay. if, he, if he did have to pay back pay, would that be based on his salary now or the salary that he was making when the kid was born, which was very different? You know, in the state of Georgia, I believe that, you know, I'm in the state of New York, but I believe that it's based on the years that are being alleged. Mm, okay. Wow. So it's an annual base formula that uh -huh. most states follow based on the number of children you may have with an individual person, how much child support will be due. Goodness. And with all his endorsement deals, that could add up to be a lot of money. That's probably why, why they may be settling out of court on this situation. And Maybe usually, that's why she pulled it. Usually there are caps, though, that are placed mm. on it because at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't take, uh, let's say if it was 17%, it doesn't, and he made $100 million just using easy, easy numbers, it doesn't take $17 million to raise a young child. Wow, that's a very true, very true. Well, are there any other court cases you can give us an insight on that are going on right now or we should keep an eye on? Anything well, I, I, I think that uh, there's, a, there's a number of key cases. Little Kim just filed a, a, mm -hmm. a former lawyer over improper business dealings and others. You know, I like to tell people, just be careful when you're making deals with people that you're getting good advice on the front end before you enter into these deals. And when you're dealing with these very personal cases and spiteful cases, just make sure that you know, you're buttoned up before you go into mm -hmm. any of these battles because it can get very ugly. And always put it on paper, right? Always get it on paper. Make sure that the paper is well documented and well read and well reviewed. And read the fine print. Always. All right. Well, Londell, thanks so much for being here with us. We look forward to having you back on very, very soon. It's great being here with you. You guys are great. Thank All you, right. Londell. Thank you.